This is one of my favorite features in Figma. You can comment directly on the design that you're doing to tell other designers exactly what they need to be working on or what you want to change on a website. But what happens when you've already published a design on a real website, it's live and you wanna change something. How do you actually convey that message to a client, to a coworker, or even just to your team? Today, we're gonna to talk about one of the best ways to cut out the back and forth between a client and a designer, making it really easy to give feedback on websites. Let's get into it. So today we're gonna to be talking about Bugherd. Bugherd is a great website feedback tool that allows you to give feedback on websites that are already live between your client and a designer. Bugherd is the partner of today's video and we'll get into that in a second, but first let me ask you a question. If you had to give feedback on a live website to a client or a designer friend or anyone, how would you actually go about doing that? So with this tool, it's really simple to give any type of feedback on websites. All you have to do is click on the plus to tag an element. It instantly recognizes the div blocks that you've built the website with the nav bar, the sections, everything, it recognizes it. And then you can essentially click on any element that you have on your website. Now, this is my portfolio website as an example here, and we'll get into some real examples in just a second, but just so you guys can see how in depth you can get into with this program, you can see here, if I type in anything, like for example, make this brown instead of whatever color we have, for example, and we change it into to do, and then severity is very critical. I sign ease, I'm gonna tag myself. We can then go ahead and create this task and we can see that there is now a new pin on my website. Now this is not live to everybody in the world, only I can see this, people that are actually signed in with this team plan, but it makes it really simple to see what needs to be updated, what needs to be changed, and you can actually see the different urgencies depending on the color of the tag that you added. Now a really cool thing actually is when you click on this tag, you can see a lot of different information about the tag that you wrote. So for example, you can see the actual comment that I wrote, you can see the severity, you can see who it's visible to, you can see the different tags. So if I wanted to tag this as typography or maybe something like a color, if I'm changing a lot of color on my website, then this might be a good idea. You can see that there's a different due date here. So I'm gonna add the date of today. And then we can also add a different comment. So maybe something like get this done ASAP. And then as a designer, when I see this in the actual dashboard, which we will get into in a second, you'll see how all of this comes together for the designer. Another great feature of Bugherd is that you do have this video feedback tool so that you can go ahead and give any type of feedback on your website. You can just record your screen, you can record yourself. And when you create this recording, I'm just gonna click stop recording right here. It'll actually show us the entirety of the page that we decided to record. And we have the same exact modal here where we can add a description. So something like change the design, just for example, change the severity to normal. We can just create this task really quickly. And we can see that now there is three different tags. So we can see that there is change this design, make this brown and change this to red. So there's a lot of changes going on at this website already, but we'll see everything in the dashboard in just a second. Now, now, one of the benefits of having a screen recording tool directly within this program is that you get rid of a tool like Loom, for example, which as we all know as designers, it's super important to cut back on all unnecessary tools because the subscriptions just keep adding up. But in this case, it's great to have a video recording tool for feedback as a designer. So now that we've done three different tags here, three different things that we need to change on this website, let's see how it looks on my end as the designer or anybody who's in this team can see this right here. So we can see that this is just like any other Trello Kanban board. We have backlog, the to do, the doing, and then the done. So we can just move this around as we want to. And this is great if you are working with a lot of different people, a lot of moving parts on a website. And again, comparing it to the very easy commenting tool in Figma to something more like that, but within a real website, this is a great tool to have with clients. So if we click on the actual task that we created here, so for example, make this brown, it's already in to do, we can see a little bit more about what this person wanted us to take a look at. Maybe it was the design, maybe it was the typography, maybe it was the color. We don't really need to remember everything that, that we talked about in the meeting, for example, or in the Skype call or in the Zoom call, because everything is written down within these individual tasks. So we can see here that there's the individual comment we can mark this as doing, as done, as archive, and it'll move itself along the board, which is great. Then we have some more actions down here. We can delete the task. We can share this to anybody in our team or the client. And then something that's also really cool that I really like is this focus toggle right here. We can click it on and off and we can see the actual entirety of the design in context so that we understand where it is on the website or on the page that we have to look at. Now, this is great because if you do have a website that looks very similar among lots of different pages, like for example, with a CMS or a blog, then this comes in handy knowing what page 
page to actually take a look at. Now down here, we have all of the different tags that we already covered. We have additional info as well. So this is super, super cool. When we add a task, we can actually see the individual div block that we tag. So the individual piece that we selected, the element actually comes up when we are tagging something. So we can see that all of this is within a text span, which is within my hero heading, which is within the H1, which is within a div block, which is within a div block, which is within, you know, so we can actually see the actual layers, which is great because when you actually go into Webflow, you're going to be able to just jump right to the layer that you need to edit and you don't need to fumble back and forth understanding where you need to do the changes. Another great feature of this Kanban is that you can add your own comments to the comments that are, were already added. So if I were to add just a very simple comment here, we can see that this comes up almost like a individual chat box or a Slack or anything like that. So you can have conversations about the task that you need to take care of, right? rather than in your massive email thread or your Slack or anything like that, you can have individualized conversations, which makes it a lot easier to get organized with your client, with your coworkers, with whoever it is. So now that we've covered the most important features of Bug Herd, let's talk about who would actually use this and who would really benefit from having something this extensive and this thorough of a software. So for me, as an example, I would really find this useful if I had lots and lots of freelance clients. Now, this would be great because as a freelance designer, when you already publish a website, it's difficult to get Give feedback on the exact pixels that are wrong or the exact pixels that need to be worked on. To give an example of something that I would personally use this with and something that I think could actually be really useful for people. If you go into Figma, we can obviously see the individual layers and all of the images that, that we've created for this project. But when we go into the actual website, it looks a lot different most of the time, depending on the breakpoints that you built it in, depending on the actual scale that you built it in, depending if you use pixels or REMs or all of that. So the best use case that I can imagine for this, obviously, if you're doing a lots of lots of projects is going to be for individual scale and individual marking of the website. So what I mean by that is that if on the Figma file, there's much larger spacing in the hero to the project section, whereas in the real website, I decided to maybe reduce that height or maybe enlarge that height, depending because I wanted to add a logo cloud or whatever it is. If we wanted to change this, it'd be a lot easier to just comment a very simple element. We tag the feature cloud, for example, and we say, make this a bit smaller. And then when we create the task, it's easy to go back to it. It's easy to understand what needs to be done. And we can obviously then compare within the Figma file and we say, hmm, that does look a little bit different from the Figma file. Let me reduce that size a little bit. Let me change it up. So in that case, it's very, very useful to have this type of tool. Another great use case would be having lots and lots of projects within this individual software. So having lots and lots of software as a designer is obviously a huge pain because it's expensive. It's hard to maintain. It's hard to keep up with it. So having everything in one dashboard, being able to add multiple, multiple projects, just like this one here, I can add a project, which in this case is my website. But for example, if I wanted to add more, I can definitely do that. And then you see all of your individual tasks that you have here. You can add filters depending on the project, depending on the status. So if I want to see only things that are done, then I can see, okay, I have this done. I have everything else I need to do, right? So I have a lot of work to do now, but that's okay. Another great use case that I think people would really benefit from this tool is just giving yourself annotations when you are designing. Now, obviously when you are designing in Figma, it's super easy to just remember and maybe even add a piece of text here and you say, change this. But obviously, how do you do that when you have a real website? How do you do that when you've already launched and you're 60 days into your launch? You know, you've, you're going to change a lot depending on what breakpoints you're touching, what breakpoints you, you haven't done yet. And if I have to give myself feedback, I'd rather just live on something like bug herd for now. I can add a very simple description to go back to it. And it's almost like a Figma commenting tool or adding a text box, but within a live website. So it's super, super beneficial as a designer, even as a copywriter, I can see this being very useful as well, just because it's easy to tag what type of copy needs to be changed, what paragraphs need to be updated and all types of different texts that need to be changed. And lastly, guys, to install Bug Herd, it's super simple. All you need is either the Chrome extension or a very simple JavaScript. So if you guys did find that useful, if you did find Bug Herd useful, then I recommend that you use the link in the description because it will give you two weeks completely for free and then 20% off for three months if you decide to upgrade to a paid plan. So definitely try that one out. As always, guys, if you did enjoy the video, then do leave a like and comment down below. If you didn't also do let me know. I'm always open for feedback. And if you guys did really enjoy the video, then do consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.